Hello friends, so as we near the fag end of this course, I hope that uh, there has been lot of learning taking place. Um, we are also responding to all your queries and your emails, we are also looking into your feedback. Um, we know that some of you have faced difficulties um, regarding uploading and uh, submission of your assignments and we have been giving you responses and suggestions and various kinds of guidelines about that also. So, um, now uh, we are going to soon have the final exams and I hope you are preparing well for your certification. Now, um, the thing or the topic that I wanted to discuss with you today um, is not going to be as specific or as focused as what I, what I have been doing so far. Okay. So far, we have done plenty of uh, exercises and uh, looking at specific categories and kinds of writing and also other skills. I thought today, because we are anyway going to end the course very soon, um, why not today's session get focused on uh, something that you may use in everyday usage or everyday speech or writing. So, that is what we are going to talk about everyday usage. That does not mean that it is not academic. All this can be very well um, placed in the broader scheme of things whatever we have been doing so far. But I just thought that there may be certain things which you may not need as uh, all of you are in technical fields at least most of you are. So, perhaps you may not require um, specifically some things, but at, uh, at least as educated users of the English language, there are certain elements that you should be very comfortable with. So, that is what I thought that I will revise with you to, um, today. So, I, I will be revising some grammatical elements with you today that something that we have been doing so far. There will be revision also there will be some inclusion of a, a couple of new things that you may not exactly need to include in your essays or paragraphs or description or of experiments and processes. But nevertheless, I would suggest that get familiar with these kinds of uh, or these aspects of the language as well. So, I thought it wise to start with uh, something called direct and indirect speech, direct and indirect speech. Now, if you know what is direct speech, it um, is something that quotes the exact words spoken. Let me repeat something that quotes exact words spoken. When we use direct speech in writing, you know that we place the words spoken between quotation marks. Now, that is what I meant that as engineers, you may not need to do too much of these. So, these are the quotation marks and then you should know that you are quoting someone that cannot be changed in these words. We are actually reporting something that is being said now. For example, a telephone conversation or telling someone about a previous conversation. When we write, we need to do this. In novels and uh, um, even in poems, you must have come across these quotation marks. That means, directly quoting, there, there is no scope for changing even a word there. But indirect speech uh, is 
usually used to talk about the past. So, we normally change the tense of the word spoken. Now, we do not need to use these quotation marks here. So, we say he said that do this, otherwise I will say he say he said comma in inverted commas or quotation marks do this, but he said do that. You remember, so this becomes that. So, we have to remember that reporting words are when you use in indirect speech things like or words like say, tell, ask and we may use the word that remember to introduce the reported words. Again we do not use inverted commas. Suppose I tell you he says the report is good. or good or bad or long or short. So, he said, but I when I want to make it indirect speech, he said that and observe no inverted comma, the report is good or bad or long or short or unreadable or badly written whatever. Observe the way direct becomes into indirect speech. He asked where is Ravi? A question mark, but in reported or indirect speech you say he asked where Ravi was. Look at the inversion also of the verse. So, now where was Ravi? No, where Ravi was. So, these are the mechanics of grammar that you need to practice and master. So, remember while you are reporting something or changing something into direct into indirect, this will become that. Do this, he said do that. He said remove this beaker from here. How are you going to turn it or change it into reported or indirect speech? He told me to remove that beaker from there, that beaker, this is that, here is there. These change into those, okay. remove these furniture, remember furniture is also one of those uh, nouns that cannot be used with the plural, however, whatever is the number of furniture around, the furniture like equipment like jewelry, like scenery, it is always furniture, plural and furniture, again in singular and plural. Okay, so, there is no such thing as furnitures, we may use it, but it is incorrect. Again, now, uh, so he said remove these furniture, so uh, indirect, he asked me to, he told me to remove those furniture, not these furniture. We are talking about past tense now. Now, change now becomes then, we have already done that and what happens to today? He asked me or he said, make sure that the report goes today. In indirect speech, I would say, he told me to make sure that the report went that day. Okay, so, look at the change in tenses and in the pronouns, uh, you have to uh, and also adverb of time. So, yesterday, he asked me to do it yesterday, so finish it yesterday, it should have been done yesterday. He said that the work should have been finished the day before. Okay, so, yesterday is changed into day before, these are the mechanics, it will take some time and practice. If you know all this, is very good. However, if you do not know that, know these things, please look up some good references, come, some good um, websites that explain you in greater detail how to change direct into indirect and vice versa speech. Now, 
look at this slide and this is an exercise for you. He asked, where is my book? She asked, did the man come? He said, it has to be done now. I said, you must remove the furniture today. He showed me around the house and say, said, we used to live here through the 90s. So what are we doing here? He asked that where his book was. She asked if the man came. Look at the change in tense. He said that that had to be done then or it had to be done then. Has will become had, now will become then. I said to him or I told him that he must remove or I told her that she must remove the furniture that day. He showed me around the house and said that they used to live there through the 90s. They, we becomes they used to live there. Through the, so remember, also note the use of used to, always in the past. You do not say, I used to go for movies every day nowadays or every evening nowadays. That is wrong. Used to is always in the past, it is over. Now, uh, from there, let us move on to correct some very common errors. Please look at the slide. I told my professor, it should be my professor to excuse me for missing the deadline for submission. He said me to go. He is troubling his juniors. My tooth is paining. He loosed his work. Open the light. Now, do not we all sometime or the other use these sentences, make such kinds of mistakes and they have become so ingrained or so uh, fossilized in us that we do not even realize and we feel uh, terribly offended when someone corrects us. But the fact remains that we do not use terms such as uh, they passed out in 1996. It has to be they completed their studies or they graduated in 1996, do not say passed out. Passed, passed out has a different meaning. I have earlier asked you to look it up. The meaning is uh, lost consciousness or almost fainted. So, coming back to our uh, exercise, please look at the slide. I told my professor. Now, you do not tell your professor, it is not very polite thing. So, he uh, I asked my professor to excuse me. So, told is ask here. He said me to go. Said does not need an object like me. He said, he asked me to go. He told me to go. So, said does not go with this kind of construction. He told me to go. He asked me to go. He said go. Okay, in direct speech, that is okay. He is troubling his juniors, very common, very commonly used. Better construction would be, he is giving trouble to his juniors, he is ill treating his juniors. My tooth is paining, this is a problem of vocabulary, choosing the an inappropriate word. My tooth is aching, I have a terrible ache in my joints, that is the way we use. He loosed his work. Now, again, loosed and choosed are very common mistakes. Loosed, choosed. So, you need to revise the past tense. We have been talking about um, how to use past perfect, simple past. So, please revise all those things. I also gave you once a list of some very common verbs and how to change them into past perfect, simple past and past perfect. So, the word is lose 
and choose and lose. Now, when you say he loosed his work, actually you mean this lose and you what you are trying to say, he, the correct usage in the past tense is he lost his work. This lose is, you know, you loosen your tie, it is very tight, so it is the opposite of that. There is a difference of one extra O. Open the light, again very common uh, misuse. You do not say open the light, you say switch on the light or turn on the light. Okay, now, here is another slide for you to look at, another exercise. Look at these sentences. He is very good at physics or in physics. To succeed in life, one has to give up. I well, The exercise is, the question is, choose the better preposition in this these sentences. He is very good at physics, in physics. To succeed in life, one has to give up or in many pleasures. I stopped writing to write, to listen to, to listen to the radio, not the radio. I was surprised at or of how she responded to the situation. Always remember editing to edit your report. Which is the best form? He is very good at physics. You are good at something, not in to succeed in life, one has to give up, not give in many pleasures. I stopped writing to listen to the radio. So, I stopped writing, not to write. I was surprised at how she responded the situation. Always remember editing your report or to edit, which is correct, always remember editing or to edit your report, always remember to edit your report. This will come with more practice. So, uh, you can always look up something like to an ing form, which goes where, what is the mechanics of this. Please look it up, Google, do some your own self study. From prepositions, let us move on to look at some uh, tenses. Some uh, Now, I am going to give you some uh, kind of reading that I think would be useful for you in your work. So, please look at the slide here and let us identify some of the simple past tenses. That is your job here. That is what I want you to do. Look at the passage as its, as its name suggests. Please also look at, at its Okay, there is no apostrophe. We have done through, uh, we have gone through all these things earlier. I T S, its name suggests. Okay, not I T apostrophe S. It, then it will become it is name suggests, which is wrong. As its name suggests, a generator generates electricity. Michael Faraday's discovery of electromagnetic induction demonstrated a way to construct a simple generator. But there was little need for such a device until commercial technologies that used electricity such as lights appeared. The earliest commercial uses of electricity such as telegraphy, arc lighting systems and metal electroplating used batteries as their power source. This was a very expensive way of generating electricity. In the 1860s and 1870s, many inventors sought ways of using Faraday's induction principle to generate electricity mechanically. Two kinds of generators emerged. The first type was a generator of direct current, DC electricity. The second type was a generator of alternating current, AC electricity. Now, look at the way simple past has been used throughout in order to describe how early generators were and how they were invented and how they functioned. So, please pay attention to these things, identify five examples of simple tense and let us move on to do this exercise. Please look at the slide. I want you to do uh, some thinking on how some of the major inventions were invented and what or what they looked like. So, using past tense, that is what the exercise is all about. Then you please uh, compare your answers with your friends and your classmates. 
early television fill in the blank what it was how it was or how it was just a one line just one line the first radio sets the first light bulb early experiments to measure atmospheric pressure early approaches to measure temperature using past tense complete the sentence now here is another exercise just for you to um, check your understanding of simple past tense please look at the slide to achieve a solid foundation for the brooklyn bridge workers dash the riverbed in massive wooden boxes called caisson these airtight chambers dash to the river's floor by enormous granite blocks pressurized air dash pumped in to keep water and debris out workers known as sand hogs many of them immigrants earning about 2 dollars a day dash shovels and dynamite to clear away the mud and boulders at the bottom of the river each week the caisson dash closer to the bedrock when they dash and using reach make a simple pass a sufficient depth 44 feet on the brooklyn side and 78 feet on the manhattan side they dash laying granite working their way back up to the surface and what are you going to do to achieve a solid foundation for the brooklyn bridge workers excavated the river bed in massive wooden boxes called caisson these air tight chambers were pinned to the river's floor by enormous granite blocks pressurized air was pumped in to keep water and debris out workers known as sand hogs many of them immigrants earning about 2 dollars a day used shovels and dynamite to clear away the mud and boulders at the bottom of the river each week the caisson inched closer to the bedrock when they reached a sufficient depth 44 feet on the brooklyn side and 70 feet 78 feet on the manhattan side they be, they began laying granite working their way back up to the surface so please keep revising your past simple past and other tenses now here is another activity for you please take a look at this slide i want you to write simple definitions of these electromagnetism rotor armature flux stator solenoid dynamo torque using your dictionary or any glossary that you may prefer to use now um i was also talking about how to write or talk about uh, everyday matters so films all of us watch and enjoy films so um i am giving you some sample reviews of two very popular films and then i will give you an exercise which is quite similar to this so please look at this slide and this is sample review of the movie matrix now uh, this is a review taken from the new york times excerpt taken from the new york times and let's see what the reviewer has to say about this with enough visual bravado to sustain a steady element of the matrix makes particular viruses virtues out of eerily inhuman lighting effects lightning fast virtual scene changes as when new wishes for guns and thousands of them suddenly appear and the martial arts turns that are its single strongest selling point as supervised by Yo Wuping these airborne sequences bring Hong Kong action style home to audiences in a mainstream american adventure with big prospects as a cult classic and with the future very much in mind the matrix is rated r under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian it includes strange unreal forms of violence and occasional gore look at the adjectives used visual bravado steady element hmm eerily inhuman lighting effects okay all these are 
very advanced level terms that you can use or you should aspire to use in your written and spoken language. Single strongest selling points, airborne sequences, prospects of a cult classic. Okay, so, pay attention to the way language is used and perhaps some of you who are interested in writing for your college magazine or even to something uh, you know beyond the scope of your usual regular academics may look at this. Look at this another example, again a New York Times excerpt a review of Interstellar. It is in the nature of science fiction to aspire to more, to ascend fearlessly towards the sublime. You could think of Interstellar which has a lot to say about gravity as the anti-gravity, that movie which would fit inside this one twice stripped away the usual sci-fi metaphysics presenting space travel as an occasion for quiet wonder and noisy crisis management. Mr. Nolan takes the universe and eternity itself as his subject and his canvas brilliantly exploiting cinema's ability to shift backward and sideways in time through flashbacks and cross cuts even as it moves relentlessly forward. But gravity and interstellar are both ultimately about the longing for home, about voyages into the unknown that become odysseys of return and interstellar may take its place in the pantheon of space movies because it answers an acute earthly need, a desire not only for adventure and novelty, but also in the end for comfort. Look at the language, look at the tone, it is a very serious tone and also look at uh, some ability to understand science fiction movies. And the kind of uh, very objective review that the review, I mean you may differ from me that it is not very objective, but uh, no, n n uh, a review can never be extremely ob objective, personal elements, subjective elements always find their way into that. But here is an example of um, a movie or a, a review that has been uh, given lot of thought. So, uh, now your exercises, I would like you to do some writing, write a short review of a film which you have recently watched and look at this slide now, I would like you to use some of these or uh, try to use um, some or most of these words, I am very sure all these words would not fit in, but try to use and bring uh, these words and bring in some uh, amount of variety in your language. So, drama, thriller, sitcom, series, authentic, lively, sentimental, irritating, annoying, boring. So, try to write a review of a film, any film that you have watched and discuss your answer with your classmate. So, before we uh, end, I wanted you to uh, become familiar with this very interesting poem. It is called A Martian Sense, A Postcard Home is by Craig Rain. Please look at the slide and let us read the poem together and then I will give you some exercise. Caxtons are mechanical birds with many wings and some are treasured for their markings. They cause the eyes to melt or the body to shriek without pain. I have never seen one fly, but sometimes they perch on the hand. Mist is when the sky is tired of light and rests its soft machine on the ground. Then the world is dim and bookish like engravings under tissue paper. Rain is when the earth is television, it has the properties of making colors darker. Model T is a room with a lock inside, a key is turned to free the world. For movement so quick there is a film to watch for anything missed but time is tied to the wrist or kept in a box tickling with ticky, uh, ticking with impatience. In home a haunted apparatus sleeps that snores when you pick it up. If the ghost cries they carry it to their lips and soothe it to sleep with sound and yet they wake it up deliberately by tickling it with a finger. 
only the adults are allowed to suffer openly. Adults go to a punishment room with water but nothing to eat. They lock the door and suffer the noises alone. No one is exempt but everyone's pain has a different smell. At night when all the colors die, they hide in pairs and read about themselves in color with their eyelids shut. Now I want you to do some exercise. What does the Martian say about telephone, cars and nature of human beings? There are certain things discussed which uh, are so familiar to us, but through a Martian or through an alien's eyes, they, they appear something very strange. So, discuss this and then I, I also want you to do some writing. I want you to write this poem in a paragraph form. The poem does not really have lot of meter or rhyme, it can be very well written in a paragraph. So, just say um, what is the Martian trying to say, uh, report it in indirect speech. So, that is your exercise, please continue these kinds of practices, they will eventually help you a lot, you will find in the long run. So, thank you very much.